Greetings, brothers and sisters. Once again, we are thankful to the one God for blessing us to be present. You can turn me up some more back there. Turn me up. Don't be afraid. Get the volume up. Nice, nice. We're glad for all of you that are present and to all of our brothers and sisters that are watching. We are grateful again for God bringing us back into another time that I may stir up your heart and stir up your pure minds according to what is outlined in the scriptures. Had a beautiful conference last week. Time moved fast. Yeah. During our convention, we baptized 116 in the name of Jesus Christ. So that's a blessing. To see all them brothers and sisters that come under one roof and everybody still wasn't there. But I am looking forward to next year in Charlotte, North Carolina. I pray that we see faces that we have never seen. Well, that's always. Now we have a couple of announcements uh, to make. I go through the baptismal list and we welcome all of our guests that are present. Tenant headquarters, 116 at the Holy Convocation was baptized, one in Rocky Mount, three in Minnesota, two in Columbia, international baptisms, one in Johannesburg, South Africa, one on the island of Mauritius. That's 134 souls in one week's report. So, all right, we have an announcement for all of you that's interested in learning how to, uh, a training class coming up. Starting September 6th, uh, the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ will be offering audio training class for all time zones within the United States, Canada, and Jamaica. All of you that are interested in learning how to work the audio equipment and don't mind taking instructions and not coming to teach your teacher who's going to teach the class, you come on. Uh, because a lot of people, they lean to their own understanding in almost everything. And then every time that happens, a mess is made. So beginning September 6th, the church will be offering training classes. Skaleski, of course, will be training. Uh, all classes for the different time zones in the United States, uh, Canada and Jamaica. All church audio operators, musicians, or anyone with the desire to learn audio are welcome. You come on at the class starts September 6th. You must register by August 30th. Please don't forget you want to register by August 30th. Now don't come ask me questions about it because I have more important things to do. You go to Skaleski and or, or just follow these instructions. The class will start September 6th and the class uh, will be very detailed. That way you'll learn how to operate things accordingly. Uh, also, now to you that are in the Washington, D.C. area, we'll be coming there September 9th and September 10th. Washington, you've been bombing me with emails, pastors, bishops, elders, and church members who just been sitting home watching the program because they retired from false church. You retired from it. It's one of the best retirements you would ever do. And there are hundreds just sick of church. Or should I say, sick of what pretends to be church. Now we'll be at the, uh, the address is 1001 16th Street at the Capitol Hilton. 
The Capitol Hilton is located at 1001 16th Street. Service will begin, of course, that Saturday, which is the 9th of September at 5 o'clock. Sunday will be the 10th. Service will be at 11 o'clock and again at 5 p.m. All of you that are watching, surrounding areas of Washington, you be there. Contact your pastor. Tell him to be there. And if he forbids you to come, disobey him. This is one time disobedience will do you good. Because when anybody don't want you to come hear the word of God, you rebel and save yourself. Come at the Capitol Hilton Hotel located at 1001 16th Street. Uh, service will begin that Saturday at 5, of course, and then that Sunday at 11, that's September 9th and 10th. God willing, we will be starting a work there in Washington, D.C., just like we do everywhere we go by God's permission. Everywhere we go, well, it is God's will that these things take place, and I must say God is doing a good job. Also to all the first churches of the Lord Jesus Christ on the island of St. Lucia. And to all of our viewers on the island of St. Lucia. We will start a new television broadcast there covering the entire island. That will start Saturday, August the 26th. It will be on uh, from 8 to 9 on Saturday nights. And again, from 7 to 8, Sunday morning, twice a week. You can hear it Saturday night from 8 to 9. That will get you early to make a chance not to go to church on Sunday. You get killed Saturday night, you can leave your church and come walk with the truth Sunday morning. So remember, the telecast will start. Uh, now, the Sunday morning broadcast would be on HTS television in St. Lucia. And uh, you get a chance to tune in beginning August 26, 8 to 9 Saturday night and 7 to 8 Sunday morning. That's twice a week. That's a blessing. Now, I want to say to, uh, to all of you that love to air this program on your website, <coughs> I can't think of the website, but I often look at the, the different websites that air this program to make sure you are in compliance with the rule of Bible law. <laughs> now, the message that God gave us on Sunday when we were dealing with Noah. And uh, we went to Genesis and went to the book of Jasher. Jasher just gives you more information. That's all it does. Just like revelations give you more information on things that the book of Luke don't give you. The book of Luke give you more detail about the birth of Christ than uh, other books may give you. Now, I can't think of the website, but someone posted the message and undoubtedly you had good intentions. But the heading that you put there is Pastor Jennings corrects the Bible. Huh. That's a truly a misrepresentation of me. First, a, risk, a misrepresentation of God, his word, the church, and me. Me, correct the Bible? No way. No, the Bible corrects me. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Do you hear this? In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. The Bible says all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. And it's profitable, and it's profitable for, doctrine, for doctrine. For reproof. For reproof. For correction. For correction. For instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. Uh, so you got the right message up, but your heading is wrong. I did not say I was correcting the Bible. I said I was correcting the errors that preachers made concerning the Bible. When they said that God gave man 120 years, the preachers have said that's when God extended man age. I correct that. I did not correct the Bible. 
Then you take that lie down right away. Take it down. Amen. If you're watching and listening, you better take it down, repost the message, and just put up there, Pastor Jennings preached the truth about Noah. Good enough. Don't you try to overanalyze and try to add something that's not true because it's a lie. Amen. There ain't no lies in the truth. Pastor Jennings, correct the Bible. If I listen, if I can correct the Bible, ha! It wouldn't be no Bible. I ain't gonna waste my time and choose what to correct. I'm just gonna get rid of it. And uh, and the Bible says, and they went on, and that's what I would do. I wouldn't be killing myself trying to save devils out here who's hard-headed and rebellious and disrespectful and stubborn. No. No. Why, good night. I'll be gone just living it up and I'll sit back once in a while on a beach. I don't like cruises, but I will take one. Amen. I will take one because I'll be able to dress according. Amen. So you'll correct that right away. Uh, that website, I can't think of your name, but you know who you are. Pastor Jennings, correct the Bible. You ought to stop that. If you're going to play the message, play it right. And represent it right. And no need to try to give it a heading. That's, that's, that's a blasphemous heading. Correcting the Bible? Now you're saying I can correct God. That's not the truth. God corrects me. Ain't nobody can correct God, so you correct that right away. I'm telling the world, come back to Bible. Come back to it. Now, how would I look like telling the world to come back to something that's wrong? You correct that right away and repent. And do your first works over. You repent now. If you're honest and sincere and mean what you're doing, and putting this message out. That's good. But you better repent. Amen. And just leave it. Just, just play the message. That's all. Let's play the message. And just let them know it's from the Holy Convocation. You ain't got to try to add a title. Because that's a lie. Amen. That's like me explaining that there's one God with many operations. And you say Pastor Jennings is an undercover Trinitarian. That's a lie. Amen. Don't misrepresent the Bible. Be careful. Don't be careless. All right. Now we thank God for all of you. I still got a very, very, very strong hangover. Amen. From the Holy Convocation last week. Amen. It's a beautiful thing. That's right, Brother Kev. It's a beautiful thing. To see the mighty hand of God working the way he is working in the truth of God. And let me say this. Why it comes to mind... Uh, as I mentioned uh, a few weeks ago, the Lord bless us, we purchased a new temple in Lafayette, Louisiana, and I was scheduled to be there this weekend, and I would have flown back this morning and came right into the pulpit, but I, I was just too busy. Too busy trying to finish things up. We're trying to finish things in the main auditorium, and we're coming close to an end. So we can dedicate God willing in December, God be our helper. So I'm really, I'm extremely busy. Uh, we already had, I had my guy come here to measure all the pews uh, for the main auditorium, for the cushions that we designed for that, uh, and for the pulpit chairs. They'll be measuring up today for the carpet, and once I get the measurements, this week I'll be going to my carpet company and pick up the carpet for the main auditorium. That'll be done. And uh, once we take down all the scaffolds and clean up, and then uh, we uh, stripped the stone part of the floors. All the marble in the auditorium was already cleaned. They cleaned it, got it all together, and they taped plastic over to keep the dust off of it. Amen. So the only thing we have to strip is the aisles where there's terracotta stone. We ain't going to cover that beautiful stone up with no carpet. We're just going to carpet the areas where the pews originally sat. And the stairway is going up to a ball, three balconies, and all the balconies will be carpeted. And then uh, once we clean up everything and dust from top to bottom, 
dust from top to bottom. Then the painters will come back in and finish doing what they have to do. Uh, we already ordered the new doors, the new entry doors for the main auditorium. They'll be hand done. Amen. They'll be looking beautifully. So all the doors coming into the main auditorium, uh, they all will be replaced. The doors down there where you come down here be replaced. All that. Amen. And, and the, what do you call it, jumbotron screen? Yeah. They already got one screen up on the tower facing Lindley. And then the second screen would be up facing Fifth Street. That way all the heathens can stand outside and hear the word of God preached. Amen. They'll be able to see it and hear it. Every time, every time we webcast, every time we webcast and broadcast, It'll be seen live so the whole neighborhood can see it. And, and, the bus, and the bus will be able to stop and forget the lights that's in front of them. People will be able to sit there and watch it. And we want to have captions coming up on the screen. That way they can hear. And even if we decide to air a whole broadcast and there's no service going on, they'll be able to see it broadcasting out there. Amen. So it's a blessing, I'm telling you. What God Almighty have done and is doing for the church. To the Memphis, Tennessee location, God willing, don't forget, this weekend coming will be a church business meeting for you. There in Memphis, Tennessee. And after that, Canada, we will start work in the new temple. God bless us with a beautiful large temple there in Ontario, Canada. So work will start there. Week after next, we'll fly there Friday, get things started Saturday, and fly from Canada straight to headquarters on Sunday, time enough to broadcast so I can work on you some more. So God willing, we'll be back straight from Canada after we work all day Saturday, we'll get on back here so we can labor in word and doctrine. Also, I want to say to the first church of our Lord Jesus Christ in Jackson, Mississippi. Yes. We finally got a building. They accept our offer. We signed the agreement ourselves. Yeah. Amen. That's a blessing. God bless us. We purchased close to an, uh, an 11,000 square feet factory. Sign company. Couldn't find a church down there that we want, so I found the sign company. And anyone that's been around us know we can take a building that's not a church and convert it to a church and look better than a church. That's what we did in Baltimore. Baltimore Temple seats uh, square footage is about 6,200. It was a library. And I had a second story there. And I remember we took the people there for a walk through. Brother, they mumbled and grumbled like they did in the days of Moses. Because they had no vision. All they saw was bookcases, and it was a second story. Floyd, my wife, said, Chino, you think we can make a church out of this? I say, yeah, yeah, this is your husband you're talking to now. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> you know, after that, you know, she kind of punched me and said, all right. I said, I just, I said, just follow my lead. <laughs> Other brothers and sisters from Baltimore said, Pastor Jennings, this this place is too small. I said, forget the bookcases. Just ignore it. But it was hard for them to. Yeah. I said, all right, don't worry about it. So we bought it anyway. Yeah. We went in there, got everything out, took the whole second floor down. Because originally it was a library. It didn't have no second floor. Built a balcony, nine seats anywhere to several hundred, and it's full. Yeah. Balcony is full. Floor is full. The bottom auditorium, which is the overflow room, that's full. Amen. Because God gave us a good vision. Also, I want to say to the newest, the newest congregation here in America is Valdosa, Georgia. No, that's the second newest congregation. We went to Valdosa, Georgia uh, and was there one time. Baptized, I believe, close to 120-something souls. Amen. Signed the agreement in sales, uh, I believe it was earlier this week. Found the beautiful Methodist church, and uh, they accept my offer on that. Amen. So we'll be closing that out soon, God be our help, before the Valdosa, Georgia area. 
So also I want to say to Cincinnati, Ohio and Toledo, Ohio, God willing, I hope to nab those two buildings right down there and uh, get that out the way. So we're building and we're buying. There was a time that uh, our construction team can go to one place at a time, but we don't outgrew that now. So uh, to all the brothers and sisters of the truth of God worldwide, I am organizing a international construction team. That way, I can appoint brothers. I already have brothers in job sites that are project managers where we're working now. But uh, the work has gotten so large until I got to form an entire international construction team. So I can have all the states covered at once. Nice. Amen. If I got 13 buildings being worked on, I should be able to have uh, 13 crews and all 13 buildings knocking out everything at one time. That's where the truth of God is at right now. And we have gotten just that large where I got to organize. So I need brothers and sisters, not handymen. No, I'm not no one that use bubble gum for taping. I don't need that. I need you that professionally, chic rock men, know how to tape and spackle. Painters. Crane operators, bulldozer operators, roofers that know how to put a roof down legally and correctly. <laughs> Amen. Do that not how you put down gutters and downspouts, towel men, oh, no! uh, plaster men, and cement layers, and brick masons, and you that know how to do pointing and certified electrician that don't. Uh, they know how to wire correctly without us dying. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I need all that carpet layers. You that know how to lay carpet. You that know how to do swimming pools. Someone says swimming pools. Oh, yes, because what we're doing in the churches that have a concrete slab, uh, especially if it's a two story church, we are taking the floors and opening them up and putting pools and building swimming pools for baptismal pools like we did here in headquarters. I mean, here in headquarters, man, uh, we didn't get a company to dig the pool. The brothers rotated. Whenever I look at the pool, I can't help but think about my one brother, Brother Jamar. Uh, it seemed like every time I came here, he had the jackhammer. And Jamar, he's short, but he's a workaholic, man. He'd get down there, that pool, they dug, the brothers dug and jackhammered that pool six feet, two inches deep, 22 feet long, and about 12 feet, if not more, wide. Brothers done it themselves and done it gladly. Amen. And then we had a pool company come in that did all the necessary toweling and smooth work and, amen, did the necessary concrete for the steps and whatnot. But, uh, and this is the route that we decide to take. We've done the same thing in our new temple in Mobile, Alabama. Everything was on a solid concrete slab and we took a room down there and we designated, we got spray paint and marked it. The brothers did the same thing, went and rented some jackhammers and went to work and we got a big, beautiful pool. We did the same thing and the new temple, we just got to get the pews for the Detroit temple. Amen. I got to get the pews for that because Detroit is ready. They're ready and we did the same thing. The brothers them got the jackhammer, went downstairs. So this is what we're doing because it is much easier to walk down into a pool than to step up and go over. So the areas where we can put an in-ground pool, that's what we're doing. So any brothers that have that type of skill, uh, how, if you're working with pool companies and got that skill, then we need you also. Now, how do you get this information to, uh, to us? We want you to have your name, 
full name, all your contact information, email and phone number, what temple uh, that you attend along with the city and state, and submit that to the minister in your area. And then uh, we want the minister to get together with the secretary of staff <clears throat> to put it, everything in order. And what I mean is this. Yeah. I would like to have all the sheet rockers on one page. All the electricians, one page. All plumbers, one page. All painters on one page. We want to keep everything categorized in order. That goes for everybody in headquarters also. Amen. Amen. Everybody. We want to get everybody involved. You know one thing I say about the hell-bound false church of the Jehovah Witnesses? Them folks will come together and build a church in one day. Yes, they will. Exactly. what. In fact, what I'm saying is in the book of Kings. That's how they did in Solomon's day. Uh, they came together. They had everything. To build a temple unto the Lord in Solomon's day. He had all them, the craftsmen and them that were skilled, come together and build the Lord a house. Well, because we have so many buildings and more buildings that is being acquired. I just got to have an international. You that do landscaping, I need you to. Because I believe in God, the house should be beautiful. Yeah. Not gaudy, but beautiful. Inside and out. I don't hate to see stuff overgrown and trash everywhere and things just look like it ain't maintained. No. God, the house must be maintained well yeah. at all times. Yeah. Amen. All right. So uh, you can start working on that today. And uh, what's today's date? 13th. I would like to have all of this information by the end of August, by the end of this month. All our, our international construction team, I need all of this by the end of this month. From every location in America, Canada, uh, Jamaica, Bahamas, if, I don't, if, you, if it have to do with building, if you're an architect, I need your name, I need your talent. I need your know-how because a lot of folk don't know it. All of our temples in South India, we don't buy buildings. We buy the land. They contact me, Pastor Jennings, we found land here, we found land here, we find land. Somehow, sometime they find land five different areas or, or six or seven different areas. And we we'll send them the money send it to Bishop Johnson, and they buy all the land. And the brothers of the First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ throughout South India builds every temple from ground up. From ground up. And whenever I go to India, uh, I all, they always take me to every location to inspect the work. Amen. When we bought several acres for the headquarters church of South India, we bought several acres. And uh, the brothers under, were following Bishop Johnson Lee. We atomized everything and sent us the blueprints. We looked at it. I told them, look, go ahead. And built a big, beautiful temple there. Big, beautiful headquarters temple for the South Indian region. And the brothers came together and built it from the ground. Now, it is, you know, we got all these iron scaffolds and all that. They didn't have that. They made these scaffolds. Took machetes and axes and took big limbs and tie them all together from ground up. And they get on them scaffolds and work. They make them. They build them. And go around the building, stacking blocks and stacking bricks and laying a foundation. So it's beautiful to see. It. So God has blessed the church. So we are organizing the international construction team. And I need your cooperation immediately. That way, no temple is stagnant. 
No temple is stagnant. Once we buy it, we can start work right away. I remember years ago, and I was telling my wife about this, I said, you know, girl, I remember that uh, every temple we get, I go there and look at it before we buy it. I'm there when the work started, and I'm flying back and forth, but now things have gotten so large, I can't be everywhere. Can't be everywhere. I'm only one person. Amen. If cloning was godly and true, I would, I would get myself cloned. There'd be a whole lot of us in every pulpit. Amen. And that way we all got the same message at the same time. I think I even cloned you, Williams. Oh, wow, Pastor. That would be something to put that up with, though, something. but I clone you. <laughs> all right. Let's open up our recipe books. Because how we made is in here. Yeah. Open your Bible anywhere, Williams, and let's dive and take it apart. It doesn't matter where you dive me. I got my Holy Ghost scuba gear on and I'm ready to swim. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 5. All right, let's have it. And we'll start at verse 1. Uh -huh. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. Run. Run. Ye to and fro in the streets of Jerusalem. And see now and know. God put a search on. That's right. This is the book of Jeremiah, the fifth chapter. Jeremiah chapter 5 and we're at verse 1. First verse. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. Yes. And see now and know. See now and know. And seek in the broad seek places thereof. In the broad places thereof. If ye can find a man. If. 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 That's a shortage. Oh, yes. Now, what that man got to consist of? If he can find a man, <coughs> if there be any. If there be any. That executeth judgment. That execute judgment. Know how to judge correctly. That's right. Uh -huh. That seeketh the truth. That what? That seeketh the truth. Seek the truth. They seek the things of God. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I will pardon it. I will do what? I will pardon it. I will pardon pardon it. In other words, whatever judgment God is going to bring, That's right. he will pardon it. That's right. He will change it. Yes. But you got to find a man. If he can find a man. If. If. I want to work on that all down through the Bible, the shortage. Yeah. There's a shortage oh, yes. of men for the purpose of God. That's right. Now think of it. When it comes to false prophets, yeah. not a shortage. No, many. God is not a shortage until many. Jesus said, many, many false prophets, false shall, prophets come. shall come. That's right. And he declared they shall deceive many. Many. That's right. But men of God, in fact, even in the book of Titus, when the apostle Paul was instructing Bishop Titus yes. to ordain elders in every city, he, he, he didn't say if there were men in every city. No. He itemized and let them know what to look for. Right. Read it quick, Williams. Titus chapter 1, we're at verse 4. That's what? The Titus, mine own son, after the common faith. Yes. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. Yes. For this cause left I thee in Crete. Left I thee in Crete. That thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. And what? And ordain elders in every city uh -huh. as I had appointed thee. Now what? If. Hold it. If. There's that if again. Yes. There's that if. Someone said, well, Titus went to every city and ordained every city. No, the Bible didn't say that. No. He told them to go do it, but these are the qualifications. So that doesn't mean that what he's looking for is actually there. That's right. It's scarce. That's right. Like one old bishop used to say, that's just like I tell you, you go in every city and pick up every $100 bill on the ground. <laughs> that's right. Imagine how many $100 bills you're going to find. That you'll find. Because these qualifications are scarce. That's right. Eh? For this cause left I thee in Crete. For this cause left I thee in Crete. That thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting. And do what? And ordain elders ordain in every city. Ordain elders hmm. in every city. I want this to be good for you preachers out there. Yeah. Who say you was an elder, then your bishop ordained you a uh, a bishop. A bishop. You went from an elder to a bishop. You're so foolish and deceive of your father, the devil. That's right. You thought you got promoted. That's right. 
That's just like I give Brother Kevin $5 and take it back and say, Kevin, I'm going to give you more than that. And I give him five ones. Yeah. And he's like, oh, thanks, Pastor. I ain't give him no more. That's right. I just broke that one bill. Good. He still got the same thing, five ones. That's a right. bishop is an elder. And ordained elders in there every it is. city. The Bible said ordained elders in every city as I has appointed thee. If any be blameless. And now it's out of margin of qualification, he got to be blameless. The husband of one wife. If he's married, how many wives? One wife. He didn't say he got to be married to be a preacher. No. Because Paul wasn't married. That's right. But if he is married, there's a stipulation of how much meat he can have. The husband of one wife. One turkey. That's it. Eh? That's right. Either you got one turkey or you got one chicken. <laughs> but you right. can't have a chicken and a turkey. That's right. Not at all. No. <laughs> Come on, Will. The husband of one wife. And? Having faithful children not accused of riot or unruly. What? For a bishop. Must be blameless. But what did he say? Go ordain in every city. Ordain elders in every city. And then what did he call them? For a bishop must be blameless. But what did he say? Ordain them. Ordain elders in every city. But what did the Bible call them? A bishop must be blameless. When a, you're a bishop, you're an elder. That's right. That's it. Blind, devil, deceive things out there. That's right. Hey Amen. You're an elder, you're a bishop. That's it. Are you getting me? For a bishop must be blameless. Now I must be blameless. As the steward of God. Steward of God. Not self-will. You can't be self-will. Not soon angry. You can't be self-will. You got to be able to take instructions. That's right. Can't be self-will rising up after the word of God is preached. That's right. All right, let's go back to Jeremiah. I'll get back to that later because later. there's just so much to it here. Back in Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 1. Yeah. If he can find a man. Do you hear this? If you can run find ye, a man, run ye to and fro. Bible let us know run. before you find you got to do something. Run ye to and fro. Now he didn't say walk. No. Run. Now if he's advised to run, yes. that show you the need. That's right. There's a need there. That's right. If, there, if there's an earthquake, you ain't gonna find too many people walking. No. Everybody gonna be running. Oh yes. If somebody yelling here. Fire! Use a fool to stand there and keep having a conversation. That's right. Everybody may as well just go out them doors, get moving. <laughs> hey Amen. Don't worry about your Bible. Leave it there. That's right. There's plenty of Bibles in the world. <laughs> Don't worry about your tamarind. Buy another one. Amen. Just get moving. Get moving. Hey Amen. So moving. here is the word of God says, run. Run ye to and fro. And now we see the same problem right here now. In the book of St. Matthew chapter 9 and at verse 37. Follow me. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenty. Do you hear this? In Matthew chapter 9, we're at verse 37. That scripture is being fulfilled in the truth of God right now. Right now. No, maybe it's all about it. The harvest. That's right. It's plentiful. The harvest truly is plenteous. Oh, it's plenteous. But the laborers but are the few. But the workers are few. It ain't that many of them. Pray ye therefore. What? Pray ye therefore. Glory to God. Amen. Start praying. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. That he will send forth laborers into his harvest. You see, we want God to send them in. That's right. When God sent them in, they have a godly agenda. That's right. When the devil sent them in, they try to build a church within a church. That's right. But when God sent them in, they have the right heart. Right heart. Right spirit. That's it. Amen. Folks, folks pulling on us from everywhere. They're pulling on us now. Want us to come to Athens in Greece. Asking to please come, Pastor Jennings, and baptize us in the name of Jesus Christ there in Athens. That's right. Amen. The mail is picking up pretty good over there. That's right. Amen. I would love to get there and stand on Mars Hill like Paul. Amen. And tell him as I passed by, I beheld your devotions and saw the inscription at an altar that you built to an unknown God. That's right. Him who you ignorantly wish of him declare I unto I you. I unto you. Amen. So the mail is coming in. Uh, we even got mail from Damascus. My Lord. Amen. Where, where folks want to be baptized. Hallelujah. My Lord. Thank God. In the name of Jesus Christ. We were blessed to send, I believe it was 
uh, Bishop Simbali or one of the other ministers he sent, if I'm not mistaken, to Macedonia. Wonderful. In fact, I think it was Bishop Simbali. We sent them to Macedonia. Amen. We got a congregation there. And Macedonia <laughs> went down in water Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So when I see these ancient cities and souls crying out all over again, all over again, One. the message is falling right back Amen. where it was before we was even born. That's right. That's right. And hallelujah. Go with you, God. That same message is giving us the same exact results. That's right. That he gave his apostles. That's right. You know, you know, it, it, it moves my heart well. Amen. And let me know that God's word is true, that he's the same yesterday and today. Thank God and forevermore. And what's so beautiful about it, it's a hardcore message. Yes, it is. None of that silly putty. That's right. Not weak. Not weak. Solid. Firm. That's right. And they're crying out for it by the thousands. That's right. And they're shocking a lot of people. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that we did not resort to the hypocritical methods that men are resorting to trying to water down the roughness of the Bible. That's right. Leading to the ears of the people. Oh, yes. Amen. When God sent a preacher, I believe he told Paul, I'm delivering you from the people. From the people. And that's what God do. When God make a preacher, he deliver him from the people. From the people. So his decisions is from the Bible for the good of the people. That's it. Amen. But in most churches, the people, they run the church. That's Young right. people run it or the preacher wife run it. And you know, that's the way it is in 99% most churches. Yes. Uh, the, pre the preacher's wife, she run him and the church. That's right. Oh, the Bible ain't nothing but a podium decoration. She run them. Oh, yes. Amen. If she say, I don't want to go to church, she say, all right, well, all right, I won't go either. That's true. And that's they'll right. stay back and massage her old toes. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's, ah! right. that's right hey amen you let my wife tell me I don't want to go to church I would tell her this church of hell dear hey amen hey amen this church of hell that's what it is that's right that's what it is. ain't no maybe so about no that this church so of hell it. that's it hey amen that's where it is with, in, in my house because the bible speaks plain that uh, my, house my house may serve the lord that's right I, 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 that's what God purpose yes. that your house that's it Serve the Lord. That's it. Amen. And if you want your house to be saved, you might as well get your house prepared. Oh, yes. To serve the Lord. And if you love God, that's what you want. That's right. Even if your children become grown and become adults and decide to do things on their own, that desire. Let's get that scripture real quick now. In Joshua chapter 24 and at verse 15. Give chapter and verse again. Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord. If it seem evil unto you to serve God. Choose you this day. You whom, make a choice. Whom ye will serve. Whom ye will serve. Whether the gods of your fathers. Oh, it's a God, whether the God of your fathers. Serve that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites. Yes. In whose land you dwell. What is it? But as for me and my house. What? But as for me and my house. That's the way I feel. Praise the great name of the God of Abraham. But as for me and as my house. As for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Oh, we're going to do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. Oh, we this will. we're going to do. That's right. Now, in the midst of serving God, you got to sacrifice something. That's right. And the thing you got to sacrifice is yourself. That's it. Yeah. That's right. And uh, self-sacrifice today is not being preached. No. Ain't nobody sacrificing nothing. <laughs> no. And this is why so many folks is lost right now. That's Have you ever thought why hell is larger, larger than New Jerusalem? Oh, yeah. Think of it. Think of that. The Bible says hell has enlarged has itself. Enlarged. Herself. Enlarged. That's right. You better read this. In the book of Isaiah chapter 5. And then I want to get the measurements of New Jerusalem quickly now. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 14. Follow me. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself. Hell. Hell. I ain't talking about the grave either. No. Because that's dug by men and is measured. That's right. It's measured. That's right. But here you got a lower hell. That's it. 
And the word of God says. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself. Hath enlarged herself. And opened her mouth and without opened measure. opened her mouth how? Without measure. Is that, think of it. Now think of this. It doesn't have no measure. No measure. And another scripture call it a bottomless, bottomless pit. pit. Bottomless pit. And then a scripture talks about God. And talks about he's deeper than hell. Deeper, that's right. Think of it. Hell is a bottomless pit. And God is deeper than that. Deeper than that. You won't get away from him. That's right. Lord, thank God who nobody under the sun going to get away from him. That's right. So hell hath enlarged herself. herself and opened her mouth, opened without, her mouth measure. without measure. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp. Yes. And he that rejoices shall descend into it. He that rejoices shall your glory, your pride. Right. Your hard-headedness, your stubbornness, where is it going? Shall descend into it. You're going to be sent into hell. And the mean man shall be brought wait, down. Wait, 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 What kind? And the mean man. Oh, we got some mean folk. I ought to know because some of these mean devils I end up counseling. That's right. Mean is the devil out of hell. That's right. Amen. They're not an asset. They're like a liability. Yeah. You talk to them. You counsel them. They're mean as the mean. devil and amen and rebellious. And I want to say to all of you, that goes for you that are here, yeah. that got this deep rebellious spirit. Oh, yeah. The Lord liken you unto a witch. That's right. You know, that's why I understand why some of you the way you are. You got a spirit in you. <laughs> that's right. Oh, yeah, you got a spirit in you. Give me the book of Samuel. First Samuel chapter 15, we're at verse 23. Amen, good. For rebellion. What? For rebellion. Amen, and they was here working, and amen, and I, they was uh, one night, uh, I think it was Tuesday night, we was in the auditorium, and I uh, heard some singing downstairs, and I know it should have been praying going on down there, so I came mm. down here and told the, the, them that were singing, I said, look, let's stop singing because it's almost prayer time. Right. As everybody, you get on your knees, and you don't want you to interrupt people praying. Right. Shouldn't be no rehearsal while people's praying. Yeah. Amen. And so when I was coming up the stairs, uh, sister came in, and I greeted her, I said greetings, and I kept going. And, uh, but just in a few seconds, when I looked into her eyes, there was no white there. Lord. There was no white in her eyes, and I'm pretty sure My she Lord. ain't have a clue. You know, one thing about being an overseer, God can show you things. Hallelujah! God can show you things that another person can't see. My Lord. Amen. When you got a rebellious, rebellious spirit and hard hair, there's another spirit in you. That's right. And what happens is when you become a long-term stubborn person, your body become like a nest. My Lord, my it's Lord. It's like a nest. It start multiplying. My Lord. And that spirit get worse and worse and worse. And you become a worse man and a worse woman. That's right. Ah! First Samuel chapter 15 and verse 23. Follow me. Hallelujah. Follow me in the Bible. For rebellion. I'm warning you. Hallelujah. You know, you know, you know, I, you get to a point when a person don't hear, you know what Jesus said? Shake the dust, Shake off, your the dust off your feet. That means leave them alone. That's right. Don't bother them. I mean, whatever God, whatever God choose to bring on them, let it bring. That's right. Huh? For rebellion. But it's, a hard, it's a sad thing to be stubborn and stubborn. have a stubborn spirit, an evil spirit, a jealous spirit, a vindictive right. spirit, yeah. a spirit that don't cooperate, a spirit that don't humble itself, a That's spirit right. that always rebel, a spirit that always retaliate. That's right. And sometimes it's not a spirit. Yeah. It's just the person just the themselves. Person. That's right. And if you stay that way, that's you, you, you're so, uh, the way you're made, a spirit can come in and you won't resist. That's right. Because when the devil look at your behavior to him, he's home. He's home. Huh? That's true. That's why the devil come in. And the Bible said resist the devil. That's right. Have you ever thought why some of you don't resist the devil? Hallelujah. And why he's in you so long? Yeah. It's because he, your behavior already welcomes him. That's right. That's right. Get me? That's right. That's right. Your behavior makes him comfortable. Amen. Hallelujah. Go, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, say God. That's right. 
Remember when Jesus came at the man that was possessed by the devil? Yeah. Amen. And the devil spoke out. Spoke Can out. we go into the swine? That's right. They knew where they wanted to go. That's right. And they went into the swine. And once the spirits went into the swine, it converted the swine total behavior. That's right. And they ran violently. Violently. And then they drowned. That's right. That's the way many of you are. You got a violent spirit. That's right. A vindictive, vindictive. spirit. No humility at all. My Lord. And my you Lord. that are tearing for the Holy Ghost, you will you won't get no more Holy Ghost than a duck can smoke crack. <laughs> That's right. And sell it in the hood. That's right. Holy Ghost don't come and you stubborn and rebellious. No, no. And you that have the Holy Ghost, you think the Holy Ghost going to stay there? Stay. And you keep being non-cooperative with God? That's right. And for rebellion. Re Hallelujah. Glory to God. For rebellion. Rebellion. Is as the sin of witchcraft. You know, you get at a point when folks say, look, Pastor Jennings, I ain't going to hear you. Then all right, then I'm going to stop dealing with you. That's, that's right. Huh? That's right. Is that Bible? Oh, yes. The Bible says shake the dust off, off your feet. Your feet. Oh, hallelujah. That's right. Shake it off your feet. That's it. Don't, don't, don't worry about them no more. That's right. Turn them over in the hands of God. That's right. And then, brother, when you're tempted over and the hand. It doesn't matter who you are. No. I think of the children that made mockery of the prophet Elisha. Yeah. Hey Amen. Come on up, old on up ball head, head. Teasing him That's right. about his clean head. God ain't care if they were somebody kids. <laughs> no. Not God. Oh, no. God sent two she bears. That's right. Two she bears. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. Verse quickly. Second Kings chapter 2 at verse 23. What is it? And he went up from thence unto Bethel. And what? And as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children. What? There came forth little children out of the city. Do you hear that? Amen. If God said, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm, he don't care nothing because you kids. That's right. Eh? That's right. And he don't care nothing because Will is a friend of mine. What is that? What is that? He don't care nothing because Shade is a friend of mine. God don't make no exception to them. That's right. He don't care if that's my wife. That's and right. And it don't matter to him if that's my kids. That's right. When God talk, when God speak, the world has to hear. That's right. If I got to hear it, I know you do. Oh, yes. Huh? There came forth little children. They came forth little children. Out of the city so and mocked they him. They got out the city and mocked the and prophet. Said, and said unto and him, said to him, Go up, thou ball head. Go up, thou ball head. Go up, thou ball head. Go up, hallelujah, thou ball head. And he turned back and looked he on them. He turned back and looked at them. And cursed them in the name now, of the Lord. I don't mean he used a foul language. No. no. I don't mean that at all. No. That means he spoke against them. That's right. And the wrath of God came on them. That's it. Amen. He, he, he turned to them over to God. I don't mean he cussed them the way you folks are doing over the air at this message. No. Calling me an MF and a son of a this and a son of a that. No, that's not the prophet. No. No, not at all. When no. it says he cussed, cussed them, them, that means he spoke against them in the Lord's name. That's it. And then the judgment of God came right after. And he turned back and looked on them. He turned out and looked at and them. And cursed them cursed in the name them of the Lord. In the Lord's name. And there came forth two she bears. What? And there came forth two she bears, two she -bears. out of the wood. They came out the wood. And tear forty and two children. Wait a minute. Them. They came out and licked the children. And tear forty and two children of them. No, the children had apples and fed it to the bears, acting like they act the zoo. And tear forty and two children. No, they of them. had all of them had forty-two lumps of sugar and gave it to the bears with a honeycomb. And tear forty and two children of them. God don't care if you're a child. No. When God says something, He mean it. He mean it. Now, if He'll do this to children, what do you think He'll do to adults? That's right. That's right. That's right. and, and they came don't forth. you know when God sent a man to you that's a gift sent to you that's right for your salvation that's right and for your deliverance amen. from the world amen that's a gift that God sent to you that's it are you getting what I'm talking? That's right. What did he say? Back in 1 Samuel 15 and verse 23. Uh -huh. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. I want this to be good for you hard hair folk hard -haired. that's listening. Yeah. Hey Amen. That's cussing and yelling and hollering. That's all right. You're right here in the Bible. Oh, yes. I got you right here. You, I read, Williams is reading about you. First You're right here in the book of Samuel. Chapter 15 uh -huh. and verse 23. I will take God. Did you hear this? For rebellion is as the rebellion sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Have you ever met somebody? I don't care what you tell them. 
They rebel. They rebel. They sit there with their mouth. Ah, you better hold that. Yeah. They gave me the book of Titus quickly. Titus, Titus. With their mouth, they say, yes, I'm listening, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. This is what I learned about the wisdom of God. God will allow a thing to hap happen that a manifest, whether that brother or sister, that man or woman, that boy or girl, change. That's right. Yeah? That's right. And, he, and when you see the same thing, you, you see there ain't no change in ain't them. Ain't no change in them. All right. Titus chapter 1. And verse 16. What is that? They profess that they know God. They claim that they know God. Oh, they profess they know the Lord. But in works. What? In works. They works. They deny they him. They reject them. Being abominable. Wait a minute. How are they? Being abominable. They are abominable. And disobedient. I told you. Disobedient. That's many of you watching. That's why you cuss the program out. That's right. Many of you preachers cuss me out, call me a son of a so-and-so and a MF and got so-and-so and all that. That's I right. I see you right in the word of God. That's right. Amen. And I'm not moved. In fact, I, when I read about you in the Bible, it gives me joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, and, and that's the way some of you that hang around First Church of the Lord Jesus Preach Christ, it, some of you are the same. Way. They profess that they know God. You profess that they know God. Yeah, I want to profess a good profession. That's right. Before many witnesses. That's right. They profess that they know God. But in work. But when it comes time for work, they deny him. They deny him. Being abominable. And look at him. That's right. They are abominable and disobedient. They are hard head and unto every good and work. And when it comes to doing good, reprobate. They won't give in. That's right. That's right. Huh? That's right. That's right. Come to doing God. That's right. Reprobate. They won't come to you. They won't give in. Won't give in to it. Eh? That's right. Amen. So if you hear uh, in the first church of the Lord Jesus Christ, let me say this. Mm -hmm. No one should be here looking for special attention from me. No. I ain't thinking about giving none of you special attention. <laughs> That's right. Hey Amen. If you want that, you better go get a husband and go get a boyfriend and go get a girlfriend <laughs> and right. get married or else die and go to hell. That's right. That's eh? right. The only attention I'm going to give you is what the word of God says. That's it. Heaven or hell. That's it. And if you don't want that, then you might as well pack your bags, go sit in one room. And if somebody come by and say, where are you going? You got your bag packed. Just tell them I'm on my way to hell. <laughs> That's right. Taking my clothes with me. That's it. All right. This is a rebellious people. Hard heads. They hate the way Pastor Jennings is. Oh, they hate it. And it doesn't matter. God made me like I am. That's right. And if I could undo it, I wouldn't undo it if I could. That's right. Yeah? That's right. Hey, Amen. that's why I, I keep right. telling folk, I keep space between Wonderful. me and all church people. That's right. Oh, yes, I'll work with you. I'll deal with you. i help you. i pray for you. But, buddy... <laughs> as close as me and Williams is, oh, yeah. there's a lot of space between him and I. Yes, it is. It just has to be. That's right. That way, when they get wrong, I can kill them. That's right. That's right. That's true, Pastor. Amen. That's Amen. That's right. That's right. And there, there's a line that I won't let nobody cross. No way. And uh, on the only one that's on that side is me and God. That's right. Yeah? That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Not even my wife is allowed on that side. That's right. Nah, she's not allowed. She has to stay on that side. That's it. And yet we're Hallelujah. one flesh. But I won't let Hallelujah. her get so close to me that it's going to compromise me compromise. as a God sent preacher. That's right. Oh, uh, no, because then I got to tell her, no, 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 no. Don't you stay where you are. That's right. Stay in your place. <laughs> but there's a line here. There's a line. Thank God the only one is allowed over here is me and God. <laughs> That's right. Amen. And when I look at the Bible, I see the prophets is over here. Yeah. The apostles is over here. Right. Otherwise than that, uh -uh, no, 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 sir. Yeah, that's why a lot of you preachers going to go to hell with your wife. Oh, yeah. Because you let her run the church, dictate the church, make calls in the church. What I mean by making calls, whatever she say, it goes. It goes. Not here, buddy. That's right. You're a God sent preacher, whatever God say go. That's it. Are you listening? In Isaiah chapter 30 and at verse 9. You know, I've said that on many occasions, and there were some women that come in and say, Ooh, oh man, I wouldn't want to be in his wife's shoes. I wouldn't want you to either. That's right. Because I love the shoes that she has. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah? Go ahead, man. Go ahead. You know how exhausting it is? For a preacher, if he stands for the word and got to keep fighting with his wife, stay in your place. Right. You, you, you stay in your place. You're not the preacher. That's exhausting. That's right. 
Huh? That's but it. if you got a holy sanctified wife that know her place yeah. and will submit with the Bible. Oh yes. Because you shouldn't, you should not have to come home. What you done preach the word of God right. and gotta fight with the people. You shouldn't have to come home no. and gotta fight your wife with the same Bible. That's right. No, sir. That's right. No. Oh, yeah, the, the Bible going to hurt your wife like anybody else. Oh, yeah. Your wife going to get upset like anybody else. That's right. But when she respects the word of God, she'll fall in line and just say, Lord, not my will. That's right. But let that, hallelujah. Hallelujah. let that will be done. A lot of you preachers, that's not your wife. Oh, no. Your wife will fight you tooth and nail, I'll cuss you, you out, and smack you. <laughs> that's right. Smack you. That's, That's right. why some of you brothers who say, well, Pastor Jennings, you know, I, I would like to be a minister. And you married? <laughs> All right. All right. It takes a certain type of breed. Oh, yes. I'm telling you. That's why I didn't go out and try to get a woman on my own. Right. No. All right. No, sir. <laughs> That's right. No, I know. And I wasn't going to. Hey man, when I first saw my wife, hey man, and all that stuff was in slow motion, jumping double dutch. Hey man, it was a beautiful sign <laughs> to behold. It didn't matter to me how good that stuff looked. I wasn't going to run after the stuff and get married because get it's good looking stuff. Right. There's a lot of good looking stuff, but the devil is in there. That's right. I wasn't going to do that. That's right. Because before I met her, God showed me my work. And you bear in mind, God started showing me my work in my early teens. Right. When I met her, we just turned 14. Wow. And God started showing me my work before then. Amen. I was a kid. Wonderful. <clears throat> hmm? Wonderful. Glory to God. And I waited. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I waited, I said. Hallelujah. Didn't care how many curves that was, and brother, how curvaceous is it? <laughs> but I waited. Waited. Hmm? Wonderful, brother. Woman can make you feel good, but yet can't bring peace. That's true. You That's can't right. bring peace. That's right. You mean to tell me a woman all she can do is good enough to knock you up? All right, but you 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 can't bring peace. <laughs> Amen. I'd rather have peace than have sex. Go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Peace is a better feeling. Oh yes. Than sex. Oh yes. Well, you young fellas who want to be a, a minister. A minister. Who want to be a minister? You better hear the old man. That's right. Takes a certain breed. Oh yeah. To be married to a minister. Oh yes. Because you can't bargain, she may use her body as a negotiating chip. That's right. Because when she got the wrong spirit, that's what she'll do. What she'll do. If she got the right spirit, she won't. That's right. But if she got the wrong spirit, she'll use her body as a bargaining chip. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. You got to prepare yourself. Prepare. Amen. She may get up and leave you. That's right. And you young in your 20s and 30s, then what? Then what? Man, you still got jumping beans in you. Oh, yeah. You know, some folks say when you get older, things slow down. Not with everybody. No. Some folks were slow when they was young. That's right. It's when they got older, things start to pick up. That's right. Am I right, I said? That's right. That's right. So it ain't always when you get older, things slow down. No. And if, if, if that's you, you speak for yourself. That's right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and pass the ammunition. That's, yeah. that's right. So you fellas out there who claim you want to be ministers and you got a wife, you better, you, 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 listen, it takes a certain breed. Oh, yeah. Wonderful, brother. Certainly it does. Oh, yes. You oh, better yes. know what you're getting into when you're talking about standing up here. It's more than standing up here, quoting scriptures and yes, raising your voice and shaking all around like you got shaking epilepsy. That's right. What would you do if your wife don't speak to you for a month? That's right. Because of something you preach. That's right. What you going to do? Because the Bible can hurt her like anybody else. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. What? But in first yeah, Corinthians. Here, 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 here. 
First Corinthians chapter seven and this verse twenty-nine. This is where 29. these dumb preachers is ordaining men quick, quickly ordaining young boys. That's right, quick and throwing them in the pulpit. Amen. And the Bible is talking. First Corinthians chapter seven and verse twenty-nine. What it says? This I say, brethren, the time is short. The time. Amen. It's short. It remaineth that and both they that have wives. They that have wives. Be as though they had none. It's hard to find one man to That's fulfill like that. that. That's like that. Amen. Most <laughs> men that are overseers and bishops, they ain't going to be like they don't have no wife. None. Oh, no. Their wife tell them when to jump, when to slop, when to sit, when to walk, when to talk, what to wear, how to wear it. He can't even dress himself. Wife got to lay clothes out for him and all that stuff like he's some devilish baby. <laughs> That's right. That's true. That's right. Amen. That's right. Are you listening? But this I say, brethren, the time is short. I remember one woman, she got so mad with me. She said, I know that man's wife is miserable. No, she's not. No, he's right. happy with me, boy. Yes. <laughs> Amen. He's well taken care of in every perspective. That's beautiful. Pastor. I was raised by a good mother and a good father who taught me how to be That's and beautiful. what to be. Amen. She was raised by a good mother and good father that taught her how to be. Wonderful. And then the word of God come along and laid a better foundation for both of us Amen. And so we can know how to be. Wonderful. You women that claim you want to marry some minister and you you not a peaceful type of person. Peaceful. Always raging, always accusation, always jealous. If a brother stand and shake a sister hand, you standing out there like you some buzzard on a limb. That's right. If you have council sessions, he got to come home and tell you who he talked to, how long he talked to, and all that. All she wants to know who are the personal business of who you counsel. It ain't your business. Somebody else's personal business. That's right. But you weak hellions that claim you're preachers. Mm -hmm. Hear the old troublemaker now. Do you hear this? But this I say, brethren, the time is short. They don't know, Pastor Jennings. All they do is they see me know. on television. Yeah. And they think I'm the meanest man living. I'm not mean. No. I'm a nice guy. You're a nice fella, Pastor. I'm a nice fella. You're a nice fella. I'm a nice fella, Williams. Yes, you are. Oh, All shucks, Pastor. I'm a nice fella. Amen. Folks don't know me. I'm a very down-to-earth fella. Yes, you are. But when it comes to the Bible, that's something totally different, buddy. That's right. Don't touch what God says. That's right. Glad to see you, Mike. Come on in and get seated. He walk in smiling. Amen. Come on, let's have it. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. Yes. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. Now, when you just get married, you ain't ready to do that yet. No way. So don't go jumping into that. Well, the Lord said I got to do like I don't have none. Just shut up. You're a novice. It ain't honest. time for you to fulfill that yet. No way. You've only been married a year, two years, three years, five years. You ain't ready for that scripture yet. No way. In fact, you're still learning how to be married. That's right. What you worry about is trying to learn how to be without one. You first got to learn how to deal with one. That's right. That's right. Then when years later, yeah. you will learn how to function like you don't have yeah. one. That's right. That's rightly divided. That's rightly divided. Amen. That's right. That's rightly divided. That's right. When you're in my position, brother, and God sent you, you have to learn how to do like you don't have nothing. You, don't have you always go and you always go. My wife can't keep up with me. No Amen. Way. Sometimes she goes to a service, she say, I don't know how you do it, and I'm not preaching. <laughs> Amen. She said, Lord, I'm tired. How do you do it, man? Those hot lights, and you're up there for hours just preaching and preaching. Aren't you tired? I say, yes, but I'm ready to roll and rumble some more. That's right. Huh? That's right. Hey, Amen. God, God sent me to do this. I, I was sent. Oh, yes. I can Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, yes. I was sent by hands of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. To do what I'm doing now. That's right. 
Blessed be the name of God. That's right. All right, come on, William. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. Time is short. It remains that it both they that have both wives, they have wives. Be as though they had none. You got to conduct yourself like you have none. Down the book of yeah, Proverbs. That don't mean you out there just loose and crazy and silly. No. Huh? No. And that means, you know, when the time, time comes come time to go, a lot of times your wife's not going to be able to go. That's right. Huh? That's so, right. But you got to get going. That's it. You just have to do it. That's right. You can't be, well, Pastor Jennings, I would go, but my right. wife can't go with me. I'm not sending your wife. Amen. I ain't sending her no way. That's right. I'm sending you. Amen. 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 Hmm? Now, if you're ill and something and you need your wife to give you attention and you're still willing to go, then I send you and your wife. That's it. That way she can help maintain and help, you know, because you never know what have to be done. And she's right there to help you. Right there, right? I mean, I'm considerate. I'm not going to send you somewhere and you're sick and you need your wife to help you along. If you let me know your condition and you need your wife there, I'm going to send you and your wife. That's it. I'm going to send both of you there. That's right. I'm not sending you both on no vacation either. That's right. <laughs> All right, go back to where you are. Now in the book of Proverbs chapter 21 and at verse Everybody 9. Everybody all right? Yes. Follow me now and get this. Proverbs chapter 21 and we're at verse 9. Yeah. It is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop. Uh-oh. Amen. I told you, peace outweighs sex. Oh, yes. Peace outweigh it. That's right. Now, are you listening to me? It is better it to is dwell. It is better to dwell. In a corner of the housetop. Wait a minute. Don't just go to the roof. Go in to a, the corner of in, it. In a corner of a house. Go top. to the edge of it. Then with the right, right, right where the edge. Corner. The right corner of the it. Corner. Huh? Because <laughs> maybe you're trying to decide whether to stay on the corner or come off the corner. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. You hear the Bible talking. It is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop. Then what? Then with a brawling woman. Then a brawling woman. In a wide house. What? Then with a brawling woman in a wide house. I don't care how large your house is, if God bless you with a mansion. And you can't be comfortable and peaceful in that peaceful large house. That. Because somebody running around throwing glasses and pots and pans and right. cussing you out, That's cutting right. up your suits and slamming phones and all that stuff, stomping like some crazy yak in <laughs> Africa. That's right. You're on the phone, they eavesdropping, they doing, what's the matter with you? Amen. That's right. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? It is better to dwell in the a The Bible corner. is talking. It is better to dwell in a corner of the house. Now, somebody say, why is it that the Bible seems like to be harder on women than it is men? Go ask the Lord. Go ask the way. Your scriptures was here before I was born. That's right. And all I'm going to do is preach it, and you better strive to live up to it. That's it. Don't you be this kind of woman. That's the right. The Bible says who can find a virtuous woman. A virtuous woman. That don't mean that a woman can get angry. Yeah, in fact, a woman and a man can get angry. That's right. But it shouldn't be so you cuss at each other out. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You going to cuss somebody out? That's Shut right. your mouth up. That's it. Huh? That's right. Hey, Amen. Not that. That's you right. going to slap your husband? Well, President Jenner, you say he can't slap you back. That's right. That's right. But. But. It's not in a man right. to stand there yeah. and let nobody keep slapping him. Right. That's, that's just not in a real man. Not. So even though the man not supposed to lay hands on his wife, he's not. Yeah. But what makes you think you're justified in slapping him? That's right. What well, the Bible said, turn the other cheek. All right. Boom. Boom. <laughs> that's two. No that's more three. Two. No more three. Amen. That's right. Amen. He got to come up to that scripture. He may not let you get to the first base. That's true. Are right, you listening? Yeah. So when you see that woman that you got in mind to marry and she's already cussing you out. Yeah. She's already f just disrespectful. She's already self-righteous and arrogant and loud like a regular hood rat. <laughs> That's right. Already making a scene, and Already. you ain't married to her yet, brother. You about as dumb as twenty-two thousand bricks to That's go right. ahead and marry her. That's right. If he's already beating you upside your head, woman, if he's already cussing you out, if he's already grabbing you by your collar like you a dude, yeah, you got to be out your mind to want to marry him. That's right. And because some of you sit in church 
so busy jumping and shouting and speaking in some Popeye tongue. That's not the Holy Ghost. My Lord. You're so desperate for the bedroom, you just Go pick ahead. up any two-legged trash and marry it anyway. Go ahead. Am I right, I said? That's right. Old folks say everything that shine ain't gold. It is better to dwell in the wilderness. Yeah, hell, yeah, hell. Yeah. Now in Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 19. Because some women is in the same predicament. Yeah. They, they'd rather be on the rooftop than That's be true. in the same house. Same house. Of that crazed, brawling man. That's right. Now let me say it to you men, especially to you that may be sick and whatnot, and you need your wife to cook and help you and separate your medicine and cook your meals. <laughs> Let me tell you something, Mr. Fool. Mr. Fool. You mean to tell me you're going to be abusive to the one that's cooking your food? Yeah. Man, you about as dumb as dumb can be. That's right. She's cooking your food, seasoning it, stirring it up, and you're cussing her out, My man. Lord. Eh? My Lord. Amen. And now you're wondering why you went from a size 50 to a size 12. That's right. Eh? Amen. Jacket looked like a quilt. <laughs> Are you listening? That's right. Come on, son. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 19. All right. It is better to dwell in the wilderness. Uh, listen, out of all the years that I've known my mother and father, I've never known my father to put his hands on my mother. It's wonderful. Wonderful. Never. Out of all the years. He didn't believe in it. Wonderful. He did not believe wonderful. in putting his hands on no woman. That's wonderful. Not at all. And believe me, brother, my pop was hardcore. Amen. He didn't play, he didn't tolerate, but he didn't believe, he didn't believe that. Amen. I heard him tell my mother many days, all right, piggy toe, that's enough. Amen. Let's go sit down. And she'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that that's a piggy toe stand. <laughs> she get mad at Ernest. He say, "Look, all right, you better go on and sit down now. And you, all that talking, that's enough of it." And she be like, <laughs> "You know the old country names, Red Bird. My my mother country name. They call her piggy toe. You know, cause the old fat toes she got." <laughs> that was the piggy toe stand. Oh, Mouth poked out, arms, fingers all balled up. My father said, That's all right. You better go on over there and sit down. Amen. I mean, he did not believe that and beating on a woman. Right. And I was raised in my, all of us brothers in that house was raised the same way. That's wonderful. Don't believe That's in wonderful. putting your hands on any woman. Any woman. And yet there's some women that make you feel like drawing back. Taking that hand to go all the way to South Africa and bring it up like a wind. Mm. Amen. Amen. But don't you don't put your hands on that woman. No. And you women, don't you go try to swing on your husband. That's right. Now, it's a whole different story if that husband going to grab you yeah. or going to try to swing on you because that woman ain't going to sit there and be beaten. No. Years ago, they may would do it, but not now. That's right. She's grabbing whatever she can get. Oh, yes. Hot water, grits, oatmeal, cream of wheat, yes. pots, pan, glasses, anything. If you're on crutches, she's going to take them and use them on. That's right. And you're going to need some more crutches. That's right. So I want to say to you women beaters, you women beaters out women there beaters. who's jumping around speaking in some tongue, you go somewhere and sit down. Sit down. Amen. It isn't justifiable by biblical law no. to take your hand and slap your, slap wife, your wife, push your wife, grab your wife and all of that and oh, choke that's her right. out. That's right. And then you come to church singing up above my head. <laughs> I hear music in the air. <laughs> I really do believe there's a God somewhere. Yeah, I bet you do. Amen. All right, Williams, come on, son. Now in 1 Corinthians 7, we're at verse 3. What is it? Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. Let the husband show the wife honor. And likewise also the and wife. And likewise. Likewise also the wife unto the husband. Everybody ain't marriage material. There's, yeah. some, there's just some... 
They're just, they're just not marriage material. They're not made up that way. That's right. They're too evil. They're too mean. They're too selfish. And they're too disrespectful. That's right. And if, if you're not willing to submit, you don't need to get married. No. At all. At all. I mean, at all. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Back in Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 1. All right. Run ye to and fro. Run. Through the streets of Jerusalem. You might as well start running. Running. I mean, I'm glad the truth of God, we ain't got to run now. Thank God. Amen. God, hallelujah. God have, God have blessed us to find somebody. That's right. Amen. And viewers, well, what's been found here is for you too. Oh, yes. That you may come on back to the right. Bible and do what the word of God say must be done. Right. This preaching is different from what anybody going to preach to you over social media. Oh, yes. Amen. Because what they're doing, they're scared to hurt your feelings and they're trying to pet you up. No, God ain't trying to pet nobody up. No, no. And God never look at how you feel. No, no. Not at all. Not at all. God look at what he itemized for you to obey. That's it. Come on, son. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. And do what? And see now and know. And what? And seek in the broad places thereof. What should we do? If ye can find a man. Find one. A man. He didn't say find a bunch of men. No, That's no. find one. Amen. If. That's true. Even down to marriage, you young people. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be in your, your, your generation for nothing. Yeah. You'd have seen your 20s and 30s and even in your 40s. Oh, my Lord. Uh, it's hard to find anything worth marrying off the assembly line. That's right. Whether it's a man or a woman. That's right. That's why we teach our women, don't you sit around waiting for a man to do for you what you can do for yourself. Oh, no. Well, I don't, I, I'm not going to work. Why? I'm, a, I'm just going to wait till God send me a husband that he can take care of me. And, and you, ain't gonna, you ain't even going to work at all? I'm not going to work at all. And you ain't crippled? <laughs> you only 18? My Lord. You going on out there and work and get a career, get a degree under your name and get established. That's right. So you can have uh, something uh, established under you. Oh, yes. Hey, Amen. Man ain't going to live by sex alone. No, That's won't. what you think. You's a fool. That's a fool. Get me. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. And what? And see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof. What are we looking for? If ye can find a man. What kind? If there be any that executeth judgment. Look at the bishops. Their judgment is corrupt. It's corrupt. They don't judge wisely. That's right. If they judge wisely, they let the word of God govern everything. For among my people are Do found... Do you hear? Do you hear this? Now in Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 26. Among my people... Are found wicked men. What? For among my people are found wicked men. Among who? Among my people. God's people. Are found wicked men. Right among God's people. That's right. So when we preach against wickedness, don't just look at the street out there. No. I'm looking at among God's people. That's right. And That's we right. have a whole lot of wicked folk. Wicked. I mean a lot of them. That's right. Amen. They get more and more wicked. Oh, yes. Amen. Come on, son. For among my people are found wicked men. Are found wicked men. They lay wait. They lay wait. As he that setteth snares. <laughs> they wait to set you up. They set a trap. They, I told you. That's right. They set a trap. They catch men. Catch men. Come on, Jay! <laughs> I'm coming, Logan! <laughs> That's right. They do what? They set a trap. They catch men. That's what the way it is with some of you oh, out yeah. there. Oh, some yes. woman done set a trap, done flaunt her meat all around you. That's right. And set you up. And That's then right. when she set you up, she set you up to burn you. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Set you up to rob you out your money. That's right. Take her money and share, take the money you gave her and share it with some other man. That's Amen. True. That's true. They set a trap. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Set a trap. They catch men. Catch men. In other words, they like flypaper. Oh, yeah. Stick it. <laughs> That's right. You can take flypaper and lay it anywhere. Oh, yeah. You can lay it anywhere and a fly get on it or, that, uh, or the, mouse, the mouse glue. The mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Not the old mouse trap that click. You got to get that glue from Home Depot or Lowe's. That's right. Look like a tray. That's right. Lay it out there. Lay it out there. Next thing you come in the morning, you see... They caught him. Oh, yes. 
that, 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 that trap lay out there open. That's right. Like a woman. That's right. And then the mouse is stuck. Because now he, he got the stuff all on him. Oh. And the more he moved, the tighter he stuck. That's right. Some of you can't let that woman go because she give you good sex. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. You can't have no peace, just good sex. That's it. That's all you can offer is good sex. That's it. And no peace. No peace. That's right. Choose wisely. For brother. the lips hey, of a... Hey, hey mm -hmm. brother fool. Mm -hmm. Brother fool. That's right. Brother fool, I said. That's it. Don't point to yourself and ask me, am I talking to you? Yes, brother fool. Amen. That's why some of you married, got married, because how good she was in that bedroom. Good she was. My God, she had you doing things that you couldn't do in a carnival. You never thought you was capable of pulling those things off. Not capable. Eh? That's right. <laughs> Amen. That's right. And then after you said, I do. I do. And she got you under the same roof. Oh, yes. Why are you willing to ignore a woman disrespecting you? That's you right. see the way she's treating you like a dog, That's but right. you ignore that just for sex. Oh, yes. You's a fool and she's cheap. That's right. That's true. That's yeah, right. man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Good. They I know this will burn the britches, but I don't care if it take your britches right off. That's right. And I leave you streaking with Bible. <laughs> That's right. All right. For among my people are found wicked. What? Men. For among, among my people. My people. Are found wicked men. You men that cuss your wives Wicked. out, slap her around, and kick her down the steps. Yeah. Tell her you ain't nothing. You just a MF. And That's tell right. your wife, I should have married somebody else. Yeah. Then why didn't you just leave her alone to begin with? That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 So you listen to me. For among my people are among found wicked men. My people. Are found wicked men. Wicked men. They lay wait. Oh, they lay back. They lay to set you up. God knows. As he that set a snare. As he that set traps. They set a trap. They set a trap. They catch men. Catch men. Catch them. That's it. Catch them. Just show him a thigh. He fall out. That's a thigh. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Show him your baby toe. Oh, he gone. Dead. He's gone. Catch men. That's true. He's all disabled. All disabled. All discombobulated. <laughs> That's right. Amen. That's right. Pull you right out the church. Pull you right out. Set you up for hell. Yes. And then when she's done with you, she go to the next one. That's right. That's right. Amen. Then when she's done with them, go to the next one. That's it. Money collectors. That's right. Amen. Remove thy way far from her. Yeah, 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 yeah. In Proverbs chapter 5, now we're at verse 8. Do what? Remove thy way far from her. No, stay close to her. Remove thy way far from her. I and come care. not. I don't care if she performs something and she stand on your shoulders. My Lord, my How Lord. How she going to get up there, I don't know. Mm. But if she balanced standing on the top of your head with one hand, my God, and when my you God. walk, everybody can see that she's doing a handstand. My Lord. One hand on the top of your noggin. My Lord. Everybody looking. Yeah. Look. Yeah. How'd she get up there? That's right. That's right. You know, the Bible slaps everything over. Oh, yes. And put it in Bible perspective. That's right. Amen. That's right. I often say if my children get married, amen, I want, I want my wife and I want to be glad to say that's my son-in-law. Yeah. That's my daughter-in-law. Oh, yes. I want to be glad, not embarrassed. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Am I right in that? Amen. Oh, yes. Yeah, some of you mothers are embarrassed of your daughter-in-law. You're just as embarrassed as you can be. Yeah. Whether you tell her or not, who knows? But you are. <laughs> That's right. Amen. That's my right. mother shouldn't have to come to my house and clean it. 
No. She got to come to my house and clean it. She got to teach me how to make a bed. She no, got to come no. to my house to wash dishes. That's right. Why? Why? Why is that? <laughs> Amen. Preach it, Pastor. Are you listening? Amen. And some of you lazy husbands won't say nothing because you scared your wife to stop laying with you, you old broken down fool. That's right. Yeah, he's broke. Man, God, man, I was raised by a man. Yeah. And God said, let us make man. Let's make man. I wasn't raised by no henpeck. That's I ain't right. come out of a henpeck house. I didn't come out of a house where we was allowed to disrespect other people's no. parents. Right. I, ain't, I wasn't raised that right. way. When I first went to my wife's house, I was 14 years old. Uh, I met her a year after her father passed. But they all told me how her father was. He was like my father. He had wear your can out outside. Amen. He tell you something and you don't get it done. He going to get you outside. He ain't waiting till you come inside. Amen. And her mother, Eloise, was the same way. Mm -hmm. Eloise, uh, I was sitting in the living room. And Dottie and I was talking. And her mother came downstairs. And I stood up. Nice, she stood up and introduced me. Mom, this is Gino. Gino, this is my mother. I said, pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Right. She said, it's good to meet you, too. And she said, then she went on back upstairs. Came back down. She said, what's your, what you say your name is in? I said, Gino, ma'am. She said, all right, Gino, time to go. I got to go to work. That's exactly what she said. Gino, time to go. I got to go to work. Amen. Not like the parents today. The parents today would say, oh, look, John, Cynthia, I got to go to work, but make sure you turn the lights out. Stay long as you want. Long as you I, want. Left, I left baloney in the refrigerator. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know I'm telling the truth. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. What he said. Remove thy way far from her. Remove thine way far. Far from her. From her. And come not nigh the door of her house. Don't even get close to her house. And this is where many of you made the mistake. Yeah. You went to her house and to then house. she jumped on you with all leg. And you mm. went and married her and regretted the day that you were born. That's right. Now, for That's someone right. to sit and warn you and you still go still. ahead, you are simply a stubborn student. That's, that's stubborn. Who's driven by lust and not intelligence. That's right. That's right. Now that's the way many are driven. They're driven from their lower nature. Oh, yes. Your, your navel is like an equator. Yeah. Separating the north from the south. That's right. And there's a civil war going on. Yeah. The north is warring against the south. The south. the south don't think. It ain't no brains there. Yeah. The brain is supposed to be up here. But men, their brains have rotated. It left here That's and down right. there. That's so right. therefore, their body is pulling them. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. Am I right, I said? That's right. Some women ahead, are the man. same way. Go ahead. North is worn against the South. Yeah. And if he look good, they just bring the South. That's right. Then if that one look good, bring the South. Oh. That one look good, bring the South. And about 15, 20, or 30 men know them. Oh, yes. And they never stop. Never stop. Some of them. Yeah. That's There's true. some never stop. That's true. And then some make the cheap title mm. friends with Benefits and yeah. to me, that's a very cheap, low title. Oh, yeah, that's a very low title. Friends with French benefits, benefits. that's cheap, that's it right. even sounds yeah, cheap. That's, true. that's right, that's right. And the only benefits is simply what that other individual can give you. Yeah. That's cheap, that's yeah. cheap. It's cheap. Are you listening? That's oh, right. Yes. Hear me good. Remove thy way far from her 
and come not nigh the door of her house. And what? Lest thou give thine honor unto others. You give your honor to others. And thy years unto the cruel. If that man or woman is showing you the way they are before you married them, before. then believe it. That's right. Believe it. Yes. That's right. You're being cussed out and disrespected and won't, won't, don't want to listen to you at all. Believe it. That, that's, that's them. That's them. Don't want to work, don't want to take care of their family, lazy as on the work, but want to mooch off your money. Yeah. Believe it. That's yeah. them. That's yes. right. That's right. Just believe it. Just believe it. <laughs> that's them. He walking around bipolar, she walking around bipolar, she hug you one moment and then cuss you out cuss you in out. a split second. That's right. That's them, believe it. Believe it. Yes. That's true, Pastor. Mm -hmm. That's right. The problem with many of us, we are willing to overlook it yeah. just to get to the altar. Oh, yes. You're willing to overlook it, and some of us overlooked it. And got to the altar. Oh, yeah. Someone took the altar and cracked you over the head with it. <laughs> That's right. Now you're at the altar bleeding. You're at the altar. Hmm? That's right. Come on, William. Let strangers be filled with thy wealth. Let strangers be filled with your wealth. And thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou yes. mourn at the last. You mourn at what? At the last. When thy flesh and thy body are consumed. And your say, flesh. Mm -hmm. And your body are consumed. Are consumed. And say, how have I hated instruction? And my heart despised reproof. What? And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers. I didn't obey what the teacher said. Nor inclined my ear to them that instructed me. How many of you was told not to do something? And you done it. Okay. And now you regret it to this day. Raise right. your hands in the air. That's right. Wave them like you just don't care. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Thou mourn at the last. Now you're crying. When thy flesh and body are consumed. When your flesh and body is being eaten up. And say, how have I hated how? instruction? Now you're asking yourself, how did I hate instruction? And my heart despised reproof. How is it my heart? My mother told me, my father told me, the preacher told me, and now I, I, I didn't accept reproof. I wouldn't listen to nobody. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers. My Lord. They didn't obey. This is so plain. It's plain. Would not obey. The voice of my teachers. Nor incline mine ear to them that instructed me. And that's exactly the way some of us still are stubborn. right now. Oh yeah. In our 40s and 50s. Just as stubborn, stubborn. as a mule. That's right. You know there's some folk have an aura about them. Yeah. You can see the meanness in them. Oh, yeah. Yes, I mean, it, it, it's an aura. A lot of folks don't know this. There are some people who have a very gentle spirit, and you actually can see that aura about them. Yeah. And just like you can see that, they have a very gentle, loving way about them. There are some that have a very mean, mean. way, and that aura is clearly seen. That's right. Some folk don't even know you. They'll be like, wow, that, that's true. Ooh, you know, that's that, true. you know they're a piece of work. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> That's right. And a lot of folks don't realize this. Yeah. The Holy Ghost, I believe the scripture talks about your eyes. Yeah. Or the light. Light of your body. Of your body. Of your body. You yeah. better hear. You better hear. Read that again about don't want to hear the teacher. Give chapter and verse. Now in Proverbs chapter 5 and we're at verse 12. Follow me. And say, how have I hated instruction? Oh, now you're in a state of regret. Oh, yeah. Right. Hate it. One of the most hardest things seem like to get people to do is listen. That's right. They'll cuss you out first. Yeah. They'll cuss you out. Won't listen. Yeah. Then you warn them. Won't listen again. That's right. But they hang with every fool. That's right. That's true. Now, one thing I learned about a fool, when they get along with some people, it is because the people in most cases is just like them. Just like them. Yeah. People that's opposite from them, pleasant, ready that's to right. get along with her, they don't want to be around them at all. No. Right. I heard the old folks say misery, hmm. love company. The Bible ain't said that, but old folks say it, and it's the truth. Yeah. 
Misery, love comes. Love they coming. love to bring their drama. That's right. Some people never grow out of drama. They be they an old dramatic fool. Hey, amen. But the Bible going to bring that stuff under subjection. Oh, yes. All right. And say, how have I hated instruction? That's the way many of us are now. Yeah. Oh, how have I hated instruction. And my heart despised reproof. My heart reject reproof. And have not obeyed the voice of I my teachers. did not obey the voice of my what? Of my teachers. Plural. Don't listen to nobody. Nobody. Nice day. Nobody. Anyone that come with common sense, you won't listen to. Yeah. But an idiot. <laughs> That's right. A fool. Yeah. fool. Someone not self-righteous. Hard-headed. Right. Stubborn, just like you. You are listening to them. Listen to them. You are listening to you are listening to them so fast, and you wonder well, how is it that y'all two get along? Because y'all just alike. That's right. The Bible says about Simeon and Levi, the sons of Jacob. Jacob was dying. He said, "Simeon and Levi brethren. are brethren. Brethren, instruments of cruelty are in their habitation." Habitation. They, they was blood brothers, blood brothers, and they was brothers by having the same spirit. They had the same character. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. All right. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, yeah. nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. And I was almost in all evil. In the I was almost in all evil. In all evil. In the midst of the congregation and assembly. Almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and the assembly. And what else? Drink waters out of thine own cistern. Drink waters out of your own cistern. And running waters out of thine own well. Yes. Let thy fountains be dispersed abroad. And what? And rivers of waters in the streets. And? Let them be thine own and not strangers with thee. Let thy fountain be blessed. And rejoice with the wife of thy youth. And let her be as the loving hind and pleasant roe. And what? Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. And what? And be thou ravished always with her love. And what? And why wilt thou, my son, be yeah, ravished? Yeah, yeah. You cannot be ravished with by no woman love. That's right. And she don't love herself. That's true. Hey, you can't be ravished, ravished by no man's love and he don't love himself. Right. That's right. And please stop thinking money is love. That's right. Because that's the mindset of a whole lot of folk. Oh, he loved me because he gave me some money. You're foolish. That's foolish. He gave the money to an electric company. He don't love the electric company. <laughs> that's right. He gave the money to the IRS. You know you don't love the IRS. Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Oh, That's yeah. right. You know, I feel sometimes that I, I'm just not getting through to the people. Yeah. You know, I, I believe I'm getting through the sum, but my God, there's some people, it's like telling this podium to get up and walk with me upstairs. The podium ain't going to do it. No, it won't it's do it. It's too heavy. It's like some folks' head. That's right. Come on, son. Proverbs chapter 5, and I'm at verse 20. Follow me. And why would thou, my son, be ravished? Why would thou, my son, be, be ravished, ravished with a strange woman? Somebody you don't even know. Don't what? even know. Look past the shape. Oh, yes. It's easy to find the shape that you like. That's easy. That's you right. can walk outside and just stand for a bus. That's right. Somebody going to walk by that's built. The way you like. you like. Same way with a woman. It's easy to find a handsome man. All you got to do is stand outside or go in the market. That's right. Somebody will walk by that's handsome to you. Yeah. I don't care how much Holy Ghost you got. <laughs> oh, I'm too holy to notice he's handsome, you old liar. That's a lie. I'm telling that lie. That's right. That's right. That goes for you married folk too. Oh, yeah. I'm married. All men is ugly. Don't you just stop that lie. You over-righteous hypocrite. That's right. You see, I come tell you to your face, you're an over-righteous hypocrite. You're lying. You're lying. That's right. It's easy to find someone built the way you like. Oh, easy yes. to find a man that look attractive. Oh, yes. That's easy. That's easy. What's hard is to find anything worthwhile that's on the inside. That's it. That's what's hard. That's right. There ain't no different than finding a car that got a good body, yeah. but yet don't have the right engine that you want. That's right. That's hard. Hard. It's a 
Real hard. Oh, yes. If a man is looking for a 1951 Chrysler, he's going to be hard for him to find it. Oh, yeah. Be searching high and low. Man, I'm looking for a 1951 Chrysler with the chrome this, chrome yeah, that, yeah. chrome the other. Yeah. Her search high and low. Then he may find one in a barn. That's right. Talk. Don't want it. That's right. So shape and good looks will always exist. Always exist. And all them good looks and shapes going to be planted in the dust. Oh, yeah. What's on the inside that's worth investing in, yeah. that's hard to find. Oh, yes. For some, the only thing they got to offer is good looks and a sex performance. That's it. That's it. Otherwise than that, ain't nothing else. Nothing else. That they have to bring in your life. Oh, yeah. Sex, good look. Good looks. Good look and sex. Mm. Sex and good looks. <laughs> good looks and sex. Other than that, Other than that. they ain't got nothing. No! No! <laughs> And I'm talking men and women. Men and women. That's true. That's true. Are you listening to me? Amen. When it ain't nothing worthwhile in here, your investment is cheap. Oh, yes. Are you listening to me? Amen. You got a cheap investment. Go ahead. Hmm. And that stock that you invested in, uh -huh. going to plummet. Yes, it will. Let's go. And the value going to go down and fall apart. That's right. That's right. So you young people that's not married and you got the itch. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Pastor, you don't understand. Oh, I do understand. Yeah. I wasn't always 60. No. <laughs> but I wasn't crazy either. That's right. Wonderful. You pay me to run after the first thing I see. Please. You young generation, whoo, glory to God. That's right. The assembly line is a lot of missing parts. Yeah. Am I right, I said? Oh, yes. There's a lot of missing parts and screws. You know how you take your car to these old neighborhood garages? And then you, you come get your car and they give you a Ziploc bag and say, oh, these are all the screws that was left. You really don't need them. Man, I came here, I had them. That's right. How you going to tell me now I don't need them? That's right. That's right. Amen. Think. Yeah. Look past shouting and Look past shaking and that. speaking in tongues. Ask God to show you the heart of the person. That's it. Exterior lies. Did you hear me? Amen. Exterior lies. Yeah. But the heart tells the truth when it don't plan to. That's right. The heart never lies. Never lies. Because the heart is always exposed. And by the spirit, the heart can be seen. Right. That's how I know so much about so many people who I never had conferences with. Their heart. God showed me their heart and I saw their past, present, and future in many cases. For some, I saw their past. I saw their past and their husbands don't even know it. I saw some husbands past that their wife don't know and never will know. Because he can't tell her and she can't tell him. Mm. Well, I want a man I can, you know, we, we should be able to tell everything. You know, a lot of folk talk that. Yeah. And then when you tell them, they knock the table over. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Knock the table over and pour a butter knife on you. That's the butter knife not even sharp, but they'll cut you. They'll yeah. cut you with it. Yeah. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Yeah, be good. And why would thou, my son, be ravished with why a strange woman? Why would you be woman? ravished? With a strange woman. I'm pretty sure a lot of men have met strange women in strange. their time. Amen. Oh, yes. There's a whole lot of them existing. A lot of strange men out here, too. That's right. 
Yes, they are. Oh, yes. They make a fool out of you. Oh, yes. We don't just teach you about Jesus. That's you better learn. Yeah, you learn about Jesus, but you better learn about Jerome. You better learn. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right. We'll teach you about Jesus. That's good. That's good. That's <laughs> better learn about Jerome. Oh, yes. Both J's, Pastor. Both J's. Both J's. Am I right, I say? <laughs> Am I right, Josh? I was the cameraman. He can't stop smiling. He know I'm telling the truth. You learn about Jesus? Yeah, but you better learn about Jerome. That's right. That's right. Some of y'all are so spiritual, you're ignorant. Yeah. That's when you took your spiritual side and went past the Bible. Oh, the yeah. Bible says it this way. Don't be righteous over much, over much. which means don't overdo it. That's it. That's right. Don't, overdo it. don't go overdoing it. You rush into the altar and don't know what you what you dragging up here. Get me to the church on time, Pastor. <laughs> on time what they at the right time. Are right, you listening to the oh, old man? Yes. Amen. Hear me good? And why would thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman? I teach my kids, seek God first. Amen. Seek the Lord first. Nice. I don't care if that man or that brother or sister is in first, Jack. <laughs> you want a, it's an investment, a lifetime investment, lifetime. and you want God to deal with you, so you want to see where you're at five years mm. from now. Are they still going to be in the truth of God? That's it. See, that's what I ask God. That's right. That's right. I ask God to show me my wife. And then I ask God, show me if she's going to still be in what you gave me years from now. Right. Right. Wonderful. Why? I wanted to know both. Right. I wanted to know, am I going to end up alone? Got to raise kids? Am I going to end up uh, with a backsliding wife? I wanted to know. That's right. It is written, teach us how to pray. Teach us how. That's right. You busy focusing on, Lord, give me a wife, give me a wife, Jesus. <laughs> Lips all out, Jesus, give me a wife, Jesus. Yeah, all right. Nice give me a husband, Lord, a husband that love you, a husband that praise you, Lord. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, all right. That's right. Did you ask God to let you see whether he's going to be around 10 or 20 years still serving you and still with you? Or he's going to run off with another woman or run off with another man? That's it. That's right. How about asking God that? Amen. Lord, is she going to run off with another man? Don't just include that. Lord, is she going to run off with a woman? Yeah. Because they're doing both now. That's right. That's right. Oh, Pastor, I'm scared to ask God that. You got to protect your investment. Amen. Protect yourself before you invest. Right. Preach it. That was my prayer. Mm. I wanted to be protected before I invest. And if the Lord would have showed me my wife was backsliding, I don't care how built she was, I wasn't going to marry her. Amen. Mm -mm. Why? I'm not a desperate man. I ain't going to marry you just to have a few years. Then you're going to backslide and be out there with the devil. Yeah. And then next thing you know, you're going to come back here with three more little pigs. <laughs> and I'm not the big bad wolf that got you pregnant. <laughs> That's right. Nice Am I right, I said? That's yeah. right. I'm the only one that should be huffing and puffing and blowing that house down. <laughs> Amen. Preach it, man. So I asked God that. I need you. I wanted to see. Wonderful. Because he showed me my work before he showed me her. Yeah. And I knew by scriptural recipe what I needed for a wife. That's right. The type, the breed. Yes. Wonderful. I don't need no embarrassment. That's right. I came up in falsehood. I met Bishop Wise. They are an embarrassment. Loud, evil, mean, bodacious. Amen. I've seen it. They will embarrass a coyote. My Lord. 
Are you getting me? Amen. Oh, yes. I asked God to show me. I need to see 10 years from now. Lord, I want to see 20 years from now. I want to see 30 years from now. She's going to still be around. Wonderful, wonderful. Serving you. Wonderful. And following the word of God. I knew my job was a lifetime thing. What if the Lord would not have showed you, Pastor Janice? I'd be single right now. So I say what? I was one strict rule I had that I was willing to die with. The Lord don't show me. I ain't marrying nobody. Mm. That was a strict rule. Nice. If the Lord don't show me, Wonderful. I ain't marrying nobody. That's right. Because in my position, I've seen bishop wise tear up churches, dismantle churches. Amen. I've seen bishop wise ruin entire organizations. Yes. I wasn't willing to put myself through that. For what? I'm a single man. You can be miserable by yourself. That's right. right. That's right. Wasn't willing to move no. until God showed me. That's right. God deal with me. And I was willing to hold that. And if the Lord would not have shown me, and I'm 60 years old now, I'd be single. Wow. Yeah. What if a woman would have came and said, would you marry me? Then I would have been insulted. Because to me, you too forward. Because now you got women proposing to men. Right, that's right. To me, that's ignorantly forward. That's right. I'm the type to just tell you, no. <laughs> would you marry? Do you see anything of me worth marrying? No. I don't need a sentence. No. You ask the question, one answer. No. One word. Do you think it's possible? No. Did the Lord? No. I love my son. Not no. no. <laughs> one the one shaking all the time. Shake so much you can't listen. That's right. You doing all that speaking in tongue and shaking, and you can't be obedient. That's right. All that shaking and speaking in tongue, and you can't obey your husband. That's right. All that shaking, speaking in tongue, out of one mouth, and cussing me out at the next. Can't cuss you out. That's right. Mm. Some of you women are too obsessive and too possessive to be married to a minister. You will mm. fly over him like a buzzard in Africa. <laughs> he couldn't have a council meeting without you at the door. Then you know you landing on the doorknob like a like, like a like a buzzer. Land on the doorknob. Come out! Come out! Come out! Like a buzzer. A woman that's obsessive and possessive and bossy and overbearing will never make a good wife to no real man. Never. That's right. Because a real man ain't going to tolerate your madness. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care what man you meet. If he's a real man, he ain't going to tolerate your madness. That's right. I mean, you women, ain't no man going to tell me what to do. What you want to get married for? Yeah. Well, I want to get married so I don't fornicate. You sick in the head. Sick in the head. You ain't no wife material. No. And you ain't no husband material. No. You don't want to work and take care of your family? I well, I want to know how much she's making. God told the man to work by the sweat of your brow. That's right. That's right. They, don't, they don't want that today. When you got a mind to marry, you ain't supposed to be looking at what both make. No. You're supposed to be looking at what you make, fella. If you can't take care of yourself, don't need to talk about we and us and you can't got I down pat. Bible said if a man provide not for his own. Don't misunderstand me. If she's working, she may contribute something to help. Sure, that's what a real woman that love her house will do. But when you come to the table for marriage, you're supposed to be already saying how much you're making that can take care of us. You 
young brothers that got good jobs and got a mind to get married, then stop spending your money like it ain't no future for you. Yeah. You may eat little. She may eat much. <laughs> or vice versa. That's right. She may get pregnant first night. Yeah. With twins. Lord. Now it's four of you. Shopping bill done shot up already. That's right. That's true. That's right. Year later, get pregnant again. Two more twins. Hmm. Six of you. Shopping bill. Oh, yes. Get pregnant again. Triplets. By that time, he may get yellow tape that says, caution, do not enter. <laughs> caution, dude. I ain't going there no more. He may be scared to go there next time. He may ask him, you all right? <laughs> Amen. I'm going to tell you like the, just the truth. There is no real man going to tolerate some bossy up in your face Cussing, crazy woman. I want to keep walking out the door, slamming doors and pots and pans and putting your yeah. middle finger up and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. And he's giving you good advice. I ain't talking about you married to some crazy man who's just as crazy as you. <laughs> That's right. I'm talking about someone that got good sense That's and you it. treat them worse than a dog or you treat your dog better. Yeah. Some men the same way they treat a dog better. That's true. Than their own wife. That's true. Won't even buy her a shirt. Nothing. Won't give her nothing. Yeah. Selfish. Selfish. Evil. Yeah. Mean. Yeah. Wicked. Marry you just to take his frustrations out on you. Yeah. Beat you up. Slap you around. Yeah. yeah. This is what a lot of folk don't realize. You talking about investing your life. You life. got to know the background of that fella. That's why I keep telling you, ask the Lord. Amen. That's right. Because his behavior ain't coming up on a blood test. No. Her behavior ain't coming up in no blood test. Right. I don't care now if the law said you ain't got to get a blood test. We teach all of our folk, get blood tests before you get married. Yeah. But ask God for that wife or that husband. That's right. You can be ill and that woman can love you enough and still marry you. That's true. He can be ill and she love you enough, still marry you. That's right. And won't take advantage of you. That's why I'm telling you, ask the Lord. You can be Lord. in a wheelchair. That's true. And that woman can have the right love and still marry you and stick with you better than a woman or that a woman or a man that can walk. Yeah. Nice. Stick with you better. That's right. Very few people today yeah. got real old fashioned stick by you stick authentic by you. love. Yeah. Stick by you. It ain't that many now. Not many. Today, what you got? Yeah. What you own? How much money do you have? Yeah. How much you make a year? Yeah. What can you give me? What can you buy me? That's it. That's it. That's Only it. time you see them nice without an attitude is when you're putting green in their hand. Yeah. Then you didn't have to do this. Then give it back. <laughs> Are you listening? Amen. Give me a few more verses so I can quit and, go and, and get moving. And why would thou, my son, be ravished with a strange woman? Yes. And embrace the bosom of a stranger? Yes. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Lord. And? And he pondereth all his going. Then what? His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself. Yes. And he shall be holden with the cords of his sins. And? He shall die without instruction. Mm -hmm. And in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. Wait a minute. He's going to die how? He shall die without instruction. And the greatness? And in the greatness of his folly, what happen? he shall go astray. I'm laboring to keep you from regretting. That's it. Nice, Jay! Do you hear me? That's right. I'm laboring 
to keep you from regretting. Yes. I wouldn't want my sons and daughters to get married and then got to end up coming back home because of the poison they got. That's right. That's right. Old folks say love is blinding, and it can be. It can be. Until you overlook stuff, and that you shouldn't overlook. Yeah. So wait. Take your time. Take your time. Don't look at, because Brother Cunningham got married, and Olive Oil got married. Don't look at it. Never mind, Popeye got married, Brutus got married, Olive Oil. Don't worry about that. You ain't trying to keep up with your fellow brothers and sisters in church. That's right. A lot of these young people get married and it's not lasting at all because nobody is teaching it like the Bible says it. Yeah. I want you to look at all angles. Oh, yes. Look past speaking in tongue. Look past his cologne. That's right. Look past his suit. Oh, yes. Look past all that because you still might regret it. Look past how much he jump and shout. That's right. That's right. Look past her talking and flapping her arms. Are you listening? Amen. Stubbornness. Yeah. Rebellion. Rebellion. I have warned many. Yes, you have. I've sat in council folk and told them exactly what was going to happen to the letter yeah. because it came right before my face. And when I say to the letter, mm -hmm. I mean just as clear as if I'm staring at you right now. Right. I'm sitting looking at them Lord. and everything just came up before me. And I told them this is going to happen. That's going to happen. If you do this, that's going to happen. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. And I've had some tell mm -hmm. me, Pastor Jennings, come on. You mean to tell me are you, you're kidding me? And I'm looking. And, and I told him, you insult me like that? My Lord. Get out of my office. You on your own. You on your own. On your own. And just as sure as God is my God, everything I've said towards every single couple that would not listen came to pass. My Lord. I didn't say some things. I mean everything. Nice. You don't have no insight and foresight. Some of y'all want to get married because you're hot. When you're hot, you're hot. When you're not, you're not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm a raw preacher. Yes, I'm right you in are. your face with it. That's, good. That's the reason. Yeah. That's Amen. all. Have a heat wave. Have a heat wave. <laughs> That's right. A lot of you are under the notion that if you get married, it's going to cool you off. You may end up getting married and get worse. Yeah. You better hear the old man, hear. brother and sister heat wave. That's right. You that are stubborn, you better get yourself together because you're headed to the lake of fire. That's right. You that got this jealous spirit, this envious spirit, and just as mean as the devil, mm. you better get yourself right because look at you. Oh, yeah. You're not damning no one but yourself. That's right. Give me Acts 2 38 so I can quit. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. All right, sinner. You that have been watching this program, you might as well leave your church. And if you've already done it, good. Good. The next thing for you to do is repent. Be sorry for your sins. That's right. And what? And be baptized, every one of you. Everybody got this to obey. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. For the remission of sins. Glory to God. And ye shall and receive, ye shall the, receive. Gift, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Anybody want to obey God and don't want to go to a burning hell and be baptized oh. in the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet now if you want it. Wonderful. Wonderful. All of you that are standing. Come on to the front. All of you can go that way on my left. This is good old fashioned preaching. Hallelujah. Many of you didn't have mothers and fathers to tell you what we're telling you. You didn't have it. And some of you did have it. And what I'm telling you bring back memories, don't it? And now you're sitting there saying, mm, mm, mm. Lord, if I would have listened. That's right. Yeah. That's true. 
That's you got right. a chance to listen now. A chance to listen now. That's right. I had a mother to meet with. I don't know whether she's here from New York. Mother, you here? Raise your hand. Not here? All right. All right. We thank God for you. All right. We're going to let you go. Come on back. Prayer begin at 5 o'clock. God gave us all something good. Now, if I stepped on anybody's toes, that's good. I hope I amputate your entire legs off. You're in a mess, some of you. And yeah. your stubbornness is what's keeping you like you are. And you that don't have the Holy Ghost that got this stubborn demon, yeah. you ain't going to receive it until you submit. That's right. You that have the Holy Ghost and now you're stubborn, you're going to end up losing it. Yeah. This jealous spirit you have and this spirit of rage, rage. and so problematic all the time. One scripture says, do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. All right, let us all stand. Brother Williams will close us out in prayer. Father God, we do come to you once again in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you and praise you again for this day. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father God, for thine word. We thank you, Father God, that you allowed us to hear the truth. Bless us now not only to be hearers, but bless us to be doers of thine word. My God, remember everyone that want to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Strengthen them and bless them. Fill them with the gift of thine Holy Ghost. My God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father God, remember the pastor, O oh God. Continue to strengthen him. Continue to stand by him and be with him and protect him by thine spirit. My God, we thank you, Father God, how you allowed us to be here. My God, encourage us in heart and in mind. Bless us, O oh God, to be able to stand and strive lawfully. My God, bless us now as we go and come again. We do pray and ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.